and an organization, uh, the Nigerian youth stakeholders have begun this conversation in a pre-event dialogue ahead of an event scheduled for the 27th of August to engender more participation in contributing towards a goal of achieving a nation that has a broader digital economy. Now, this morning, if you had watched uh, some of the highlights of the event coverage, which we aired shortly before we're joined by our guests in the studio, we have the convener of the event, Mr. Blessing Oyefesho, in the st studios, alongside Honorable Desmond Olariwaju. Good morning to you, gentlemen, and welcome to the program. Yeah, it's a good pleasure. morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Now, let me begin with you as convener of the initiative. How is it important at this time when nations across the world are shaping their digital economy and conversations in Nigeria are still more or less beginning to garner awareness. Is this still part of awareness creation or are there indeed players in the game that are ready to transition Nigeria actively to, into, the, into the digital space? Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate your insights so far. Nigeria is a leading figure in Africa when we talk about digital economy. So the program Nigeria is Stakeholders Conversation 3.0, which is aimed at showcasing the, the competitiveness, global competitiveness of the nation. We are matured, we are maturing, and we have what it takes to lead Africa in the global economy ecosystem, ecospace. So the program is not about to bring experts, youth survey together. It's to make a global statement that we have what it takes to lead Africa. We have the infrastructure, we have the human resources, we have the population, you know, that we can boldly say we are the giant of Africa in the digital economy system in Africa. Now, we looked at some of the comments you made at the event yesterday. Let's get your position on the choice of theme for this event and how apt it is in the settings and dynamics as a leading nation in Africa, much like uh, your colleague here stated. Uh, Bicho, thank you for that question. You need to underscore and understand the fact that we did not just transit into digital economy. Nigeria, as one of the leading countries in the world and in Africa, has begun this journey since the era of Olusegun or Basanjo, when they introduced, you know, you can't talk about digital economy without talking about the infrastructure, the digital infrastructure. And that is the platform that you build every other digital economy or not on, such as you talk about the social media platform, you talk about fintech, financial tech, you talk about cryptocurrency, you talk about, you know, e-commerce and all that. The likes of Konga, the likes of Jumia, and Gigi, and all that. And you talk about Pampe, Ope, and all that, that building uh, seamless, you know, transaction in our financial world. These are platforms that you build on infrastructure of digitalization of the Africa and the Nigeria, which we have begun so many years back. What we are doing at the, the, uh, at the digital economy transition, uh, the global competitiveness for our sustainable growth in 27th of August is not to transit us, but to make a statement like he said. And that is why the event is packed with a lot of activities to show our innovativeness, our competitiveness. Because you know, sometimes when you hear about Nigeria, some of the things you see there are the negative aspect of Nigeria. But there are a lot of good side of Nigeria. And that is what we are trying to do. And that way, what we are doing is to collaborate with the government to see that we will invest in the digital ecos ecosystem. Now, this collaboration he speaks of, is it under the office of the Minister of uh, uh, Digital Economy and Innovation? Or is it uh, what arm of the government is collaborating with, with your outfit? Yeah, thank you very much. The event is, is collaborated with the uh, office of his special assistant to the president on ICT and uh, digital innovation, as well as the Office of the Special Assistant to the President on the Youth Initiatives. Yes, uh, the Minister of Digital Innovation is not due to be at the event, but we uh, uh, anticipate to have uh, uh, the need that boss, that is uh, Ino uh, uh, Kashifu, Kashifu as, a, as a keynote speaker at the event, as well as other 
uh, relevant government agencies to come and showcase what they have been doing so far to advance the digital transition of Nigeria. Now, for opportunities for the Nigerian youth, because uh, most times when we talk about private public partnership, government agencies, NGOs, and whatnot, stakeholders in the digital economy, the youths who are key drivers of this innovation that we look for and envision our country to have its prosperity domiciled on, always want to ask, what's the need for us? How are we sure that it represents our benefits that we are carried along in this initiative? Uh, Bito, you need to understand when you talk about the digital economy or you talk about technology generally, uh, the demograph that is captured in the present age and time is the young people between the age of 18 and 35, which constitutes about 51%, 81%. And if you look at digital, based on your, your, um, your understanding of our environment, you find out that the people who compete in the digital space, or the people who are taking charge of the digital ecosystem are the young people. So it is not a question of trust. Is a question of participation and ensuring that the event is is equipped with the right skills that they will take on new challenges in the world of tech, uh, tech new challenges in the world of digital and trying to unravel solutions and provide solutions so we are coming to amplify we are coming together to provide better understanding into because when you talk about the digital world every day by day there is innovations there are innovations that take the world by storm. Cryptocurrency and blockchain economy is also one of it. And right now, a lot of Nigerians are not captured into that economy. We are talking about virtual currency. We are talking about a world where everybody can be, you know. That is one beautiful thing about technology. When you talk about technology, it's bringing a platform where everybody can be inclusive included in the world or in the global economy as long as you have access to a phone and you have access to data that is internet facilities you can be captured all you need is the necessary skills and then there are a lot of people who are making it big you know when you talk about this virtual currency we're talking about some en inscription using the words using the crypto geography now, now let me look at it from the perspective of government and that's where most of the concerns of this young nigerians are yes nigerian youths are actively involved in blockchain technology mm. but on the part of the government the government has shown some skepticism about welcoming this technology many would also point to the recent issues with allegations of financing terrorism yeah, and yeah. questions raised by the government on the inability to track most transactions done on this platform we saw the issue with Binance as well. How do we hope to get government on board with this idea? Why cryptocurrency is the next or the future of transaction, the future of a global economy is the future. There's no denial about that. But for us to actually secure that future, there is a strong need for what we call regulations. Now, the regulations means that we would be able to safeguard every investor in the cryptocurrency space as well as encourage innovations to maximize innovations so the regulation is not to stop but also to regulate the activities in order to provide further or better security why cryptocurrency as a concept itself is a concept that talks more about the security of the chains if you understand the blockchain very well, it's about inscription using photo or using data. But then, when you are in the world of ecosystem uh, of this of the cryptocurrency, you will understand that there is limitless possibility of a hackers and volatility. So, what the regulations will do? Because even in the globe, in the world, in in US, you know, US have yeah, US uh, coin. Nigeria do not have coin yet because us understood the future it is not something that the country will need to shy away from why it has been a mirage and a challenge in the view in the, in the recent time with the issue of binance and all that just about three days ago i psychos the firs boss 
was talking about the need. He organized a convention with the National Assembly members and the committee that is in charge. He hosted them and they looked critically at creating regulations to say, guide cryptocurrency because there is no way Nigeria can exempt itself from crypto world. It, is, it has come to stay. So it is now left for us to create the right laws, the right regulations to see that we safeguard this sector of digital economy as well as create sustainable growth for the country. Now, now sustainable growth, it's a concern of many Nigerians as well. Much like you cited a reference to the United States that has its own coin. Yes. Nigeria attempted at having a digital currency back in 2014 under the then president Muhammadu Buhari. Nigeria came up with the e naira. Now, the adoption rate, as revealed by some research, is less than 0.3% of Nigeria's population have adopted the Inara. There are fears that it almost feels as though government comes up with this brilliant initiative owing to interest of the stakeholders involved. And after the administration exits, most of those policies or frameworks are dumped. But where do you think that the previous government got it wrong with the Inara? And do you hope that the current administration, owing to events like this, can build on? those successes in terms of having a digital currency to start from the inara before we look at developing another coin for nigeria in line with being able to better our store of value and mode of transaction in a digital currency that is unique to our nation you see you need to understand something beautiful and that is the fact that nigeria is a developing country why we are faster why our youths are doing so greatly in terms of these uh, digital space and uh, fintech and cryptocurrency and this e naira you need to know that the grant there's a certain framework infrastructure we are we still need to invest more you cannot just come in with an emergency uh, policy that has no foundation i'm talking about the foundation is about creating awareness and integrating other sectors to work collaboratively to achieve the results you wanted to achieve with the policy creating by creating the inera as at that time i can tell you that nigeria is not ripe for that now but with the reality in the world today and with the participation of more youths in this e economy and this digital space i think the inera with a proper regulation at this material time will go a long way in creating a sustainable, a sustainable pathway for the future of our economy in nigeria now, now, it's with the hopes that uh, the government builds on this in terms of what Honorable Desmond has said, the right time to begin to engender investments in digital economy. Now, on the part of the young persons, I, I cannot think off the top of my head many schools, either at the secondary level or even tertiary institutions, that treat this issue of finance from the cryptocurrency angle as part of their curriculum. Do you think that in advocacy, part of this event, one of the calls to the government should be in making this a foundational training so that going through school, even when you look at courses like business and admin, there is a robust framework yeah. to teach this angle of digital economy in our schools because most of the persons that do cryptocurrency now will tell you, probably learned from one mentor online or was opportunity to be in one training online in terms of what our education is and its standards that is one of the places that I, i'm guessing maybe this initiative this idea or this event should also put on the table of the government what, what do you have to say in that regard yeah thank you very much i think uh, government is doing its best you know government is a conglomerate of organizations agencies you know working at different levels and the, at the level of education, which we just talked about, I think uh, they, they are doing their best. They thank, th thanks to the private sector institutions. Uh, if you go to most of the institutions in the private sector, you, you realize that they've taken uh, data economy learning so serious. Even some public secondary schools, primary schools now, they are adopting data economy models to teach their children robotic learning, you know, STEM has come to stay. So it's a it's a work in progress. So the program at the NYC Conversation 3.0 is bringing together young tech service, particularly from the age of 18 to 35, from secondary school graduates, university students that are key player in the digital economy space. 
definitely we have different section of the program that looks into capacity building of those participants to educate them you know we are training them we are training some of the participants on digital economy the cryptocurrency digital financing and all that so i believe it's work in training the government is doing the private sector is doing its best and uh, we shall get to our destination very soon now, now we're looking at economic progress and in spite of the current challenges nigeria has as a nation there is a lot of money that is being repatriated from abroad we also hear that that the diaspora remittances going up the highest level in nigeria and most of this is in dollars now in, in the hope of strengthening the naira most of all this are electronic wallets that of store, course, of course. store value in different currencies yes. uh, and when you look at it most of the transactions there are done in currencies that are unique to these different countries apart from the coins that people continue to mine what's your hope that one day the naira would find its place of pride among this these denominations that are quite so gloriously displayed on this uh, e, e transaction platforms you see um bito it's interesting this morning that uh, we are looking into this course cryptocurrency which is just a little unit of digital economy it is very very minute digital economy is so broad digital economy is so wide that if we tap into that digital economy you know well you know we've depended so much on crude we've depended so much on oil it's not a, it's not a bad thing it's a blessing from god but in this era and time it is about time that the country needs to diversify and the and the the glaring opportunity for us to take our economy back to this to this to to to, to a fortune to a path of growth and sustainability is this digital economy and this cryptocurrency you just thought about you know when you talk about cryptocurrency as a concept a lot of people do not understand it you see it is for me it is a global currency that you operate on a platform as long as you're able to create as many as possible blockchains and it is a seamless way that reduces human interference it is a kind of transaction that is open when somebody make a transaction in you in in ukraine you can see it from nigeria because they have what they call public uh, keys and private keys you know it's, a, it's an inscription as long as you're on that platform because it is a platform i can decide to be in the platform of what ethereum or i can be on bitcoin or any other coin it is a value it is it's a shared value across the globe so now we can begin to look at creating our values in maybe naira uh, naira coin or any coin that's and then there are a lot of people who will jump on the chain across the globe that means prosperity for nigeria because this coin this they have their their virtual their virtual currency just like naira just like dollar and this one has no limits so we can even take the world by storm if we invest and investment means training and what and minings and these are skills <laughs> it's not spiritual there is no gimmicks. It is about having the necessary skills and equ equipping yourself with the up-to-date trend because you must be following the trend. If you are a miner, you need to know what is going on. You need to know when you are beginning to be outdated, not to lose your, but you'll be losing value. For you to get more values, you need to be what? You need to be on top of the game. So this is something we can achieve with our population in Nigeria. And one good thing about this cryptocurrency and this virtual currency is that it can put nigeria in the map again of economic prosperity now we'll talk about some of the other benefits in terms of why people should embrace cryptocurrency but right now there's some challenges and it's owing to some of the worrying statistics that nigerians continue to grapple with one is internet penetration just the other day he was in our studio and we're talking about some of the bills that the senate had to stand down especially with the proposal to hike the cost of communication telecommunications some of the major partners in nigeria cyber levies and the rest of them who are going to be providing the network for people who are in this digital space to do are looking to increase their tariffs or into the high cost of living across board whilst this is one of the pressing issues the other one is also the literacy level and yeah. access of families to computer we're told that over 
twenty percent of families in Nigeria do not have access to even a smartphone or any type mm. of computer. Now the hope is that it still falls on the table of government to create that enabling environment for families to be able to afford such devices and also for internet and also electricity, which is going to be a key driver to drive these services. Uh, right now, it almost feels as though these brilliant ideas are on the table, but when you look at the demographic of Nigerian youths who can say that they are well equipped to be able to tap from this beautiful, glorious nature of cryptocurrency, they are but a few. What are your hopes that in creating this enabling environment, the cost of accessing data, electricity, and even owning a smart device can be brought to the barest minimum for Nigerian youths to tap into this digital economy as we look to transition? Yeah, thank you very much, Vito. I, I, I belong to the school of thought that says, uh, that believe that government have no business in business. The only business of government in business is to create a enabling environment for businesses to spur. And I believe that uh, the administration of uh, President Bola Metinobu is doing all he can to create an enabling environment, even though everything comes with its own challenges. The lawmakers are doing their best to ensure that uh, you know the business of uh, internet penetration goes smoothly. And uh, particularly, the bill that you talked about, the bill is still in progress. And they are, that's where civil society comes in, to look into what these uh, lawmakers are putting together, to amplify, to speak for the people. Any policy that will not be, that will not make life, uh, that make, uh, make it almost unbearable for people to advance in digital penetration, the responsibility of the civil society actor is to engage with policy makers to step it down or to you know try to reconstruct it so i i i i believe that the internet accessibility should be free there's a global advocacy that believes that accessibility to internet should be a fundamental human right because we are advancing into the future and the future is digital the future is seamless. So if we are looking at, you know, advancing or transiting our uh, from a local way of doing business to the uh, digital economy, that means we are moving more a good number of our population, you know, into the future. So the government must create the um, enabling environment policies that make it seamless, accessibility, increasing the tariff or whatever that it's called the bill you know it's not something that we at the from the civil society organization are encouraging what we are doing is to engage with lawmakers which is what we know how to do best they lobby them to let them know you know there are some policy that are anti-people if you continue to bring together anti-people policy without understanding the way our nigerians are suffering to survive you know it's it's not good for the nation so it's the work of the civil society organizations actors to continually engage the government and i believe that the president that we have in the senate the president uh, uh senator godwin Pabio, who is the senate president of the 10th assembly 10th senate have a listening ear so it is left for us to organize ourselves accordingly to pressure you don't need to add more body you know we are we are trying to amplify why we need to advance our younger ones like for me my 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 my, my first son is, is is gonna be 10 in some months from now we, he has access to this digital gadget not everybody have the privilege but for those that are not privileged it is the responsibility of the government to include them in the digital uh, uh, future that they want to achieve. So, government must try to step down the policy that makes it inaccessible for the common man. Which, when we talk about the population, you talk about the demographic of you, which is about 80, uh, 75 80%. So, we are looking at if you are making a policy that will allow 80%, okay, let's not exaggerate 80%, that we allow 50% of your population that we are looking at advancing the digital economy, you make a policy that will, that will be detrimental for them to participate. That means we are preparing to fail in the future. 
So we use this opportunity to uh, ask the relevant actors in the civil society, social impact, to come together to work closely with the lawmakers. We can't leave the business of lawmaking for lawmakers alone. It is all inclusive responsibility. So if that is done, I believe we'll be able to yeah, achieve the, in the future of sustaining the nation's uh, 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 competitiveness in the digital economy space. Now, there's a question of brightest mind. I, you maybe as you look to add to what he said, yeah. there's a question of our brightest minds who are thriving in the digital space. Some of them creating some of the best platforms we've enjoyed, much like you listed in your opening comments. But the brain drain issues continue to affect a large number of youths who are more savvy, who are more technically gifted and more skilled and well suited for this digital economy we hope to transition to in making these policies that enable for sustainable development and growth. How do we ensure that we keep those minds in Nigeria or even if they are abroad can still come back and contribute towards nation building? First of all, Bito, as a political analyst and a political scholar, I've got to understand after many years of research about how governance is run in Nigeria, I realized that one of the biggest challenges faced with as a country is that our country stumbled into making policies. They are not proactive, they are rather reactionary. You know, before you make policies, yes, we have institutions that are saddled with the responsibility of research into policy, like Black and the rest of them. But what I want you to understand is this, that the government are yet to settle down to first of all understand whose interest are they pushing forward? Their personal interest or the general interest of the masses? It is when government infuses into himself the spirit of empathy in governance. And that is another, uh, they call it uh, intelligent um, um, uh, social, is it social conscience? that talks about when a leader thinks about his people governance is easy policies are a result of research and trying to solve problems now look at the demograph large number of the nigerian people are doing it by themselves government is not really providing the enabler the enabling environment which is their business in business they are failing every day in their own responsibility and what Nigerian government in the last 35 years is doing is to manage crisis. You don't go when your work is managing crisis. But rather, you go when you transform through thinking. When you apply what they call problem solving techniques. Problem solving techniques will tell you to do what they call research, to do what they call prevention, advocacy, and inclusivity. But here in this country, we don't do that. And that is why you see that large number of the Nigerian people are not yet captured. This country is a country blessed with the best brain. Our genes, you know, even people that accidentally get this gene of Nigeria, maybe through marriage or anything, through business, you see that they excel in their various fields. That is to tell you that there is something special about Nigeria. And that is why I've always had this hope in myself that Nigeria will definitely get better. It's just for us to have the right leaders there that would make policy based on understanding of the need and the aspirations of the people. What are the things Nigeria youth needs right now? Most Nigerian youth do not need a um, white collar job. A lot of them have these entrepreneurial skills. What they need is the enabler, the right policies. And not just making the right policies, the right infrastructure. Now, talking about infrastructure, you need to have gadgets. You need to have access to the internet. Whose responsibility it is? Because the Nigerian government want to reap where they have not sold. You're coming up with policies to levied people. Have you made commensurable investment into that infrastructure development and equipping the youth? Because you cannot give what you don't have. You want Nigeria to give out of their nose difficult first of all educate them give them the necessary skills give them necessary infrastructure and then come with the levy it will be accepted 
I am in a proportion of tax because tax is used for circling successful economic development for everybody. So taxing is very good. It's a good concept in the world. But not at the detriment of the people that are looking for uh, what to eat. Most people, like one of the things we are doing in our event is to launch a book we call Talent Rebute. Announcing the Nigeria cyber uh, cyber crime. You understand? Skills. Skills. Of into youth. of youth into what positive. into positive use for sustainable goods economic goods it's possible there are a lot of young people that are not educated but you give them computer they can make something great out of it and that is why we said the only platform the only economy that can create inclusivity wealth across every age irrespective of age is the digital space and the cryptocurrency so government needs to look at it make the right policies inculcate more people and you see that in the nearest future you will find out that everybody will be happy. And let me even tell you, do you even, have you ever asked yourself a question? Why blockchain? Why cryptocurrency? Why is the world talking about cryptocurrency today? Because we've tried to see how we can help the world in terms of solving limited economic crisis. Thank God for this creation economy that we are going into, which is what? The digital economy. Digital economy is a concept that talks about transiting the institutional business into digital that means if you used to have a market before in wuse you don't need wuse market although some people are so conservative you but you don't really need to be in wuse market for you to compete with the best businessman in abuja you don't need to be in akoba market in lagos you don't need to be in upper wire you know in nature you don't need to be in uh, newi you don't need to be in a bar area market you can actually transit and do your business online even robotic when we talk about AI and robotic. We are talking about how we can limit, through the help of technology, the use of human, you know, in getting things done, which will create more wealth for everybody because it's a creation economy. As long as you give young people the right skills, the right talent, they would do, they will excel. And that is what we need now. Why God has blessed us with oil? What about the human cap capital that we have? What are we doing to unless it? And that is what digital space offers us. Now, let's talk about the book he mentioned. Uh, it's from the perspective of some of the challenges and some of the concerns that the Nigerian government has been skeptical about in terms of our cybersecurity. Now, whilst those bills and those levies have been stood down in the interim, there is a profiling of most Nigerian youths who are tech savvy or in the digital space. There's the Yahoo Yahoo of course. perspective from law enforcement. But in ensuring that there is the right education through this book, uh, how, what are your hopes that uh, this Nigerian youth will borrow the positive sides of this to better our image globally? Yeah, thank you very much. I talent reboot, harnessing Nigerian youth cybercrime skill for positive use, which we believe we have to the uh, economic growth of a nation. The book will be presented during the. NYS conversation 3.0 and uh, we are currently in conversation with the EFCC and uh, because EFCC is the regulatory agency to touch light into involvement of young Nigerians in the Yahoo Yahoo saga that we talked about. Now, why are we engaging with EFCC? We carry out a smaller research <coughs> A smaller research within the south southern southern Nigerian states. Not the north, you know, Nigeria is divided into two, the north and the south. So we carry out a, a smaller research in the southern Nigeria. And even though the research is so small, but it gives us an idea into the reality of the day. What was the finding? Out of ten household from every state that we visited, out of ten household. We discover that seven out of ten household you find is it that a daughter that is helping the boyfriend to pick up or you see a son of a cousin a nephew that is either involved in internet uh, email uh, uh, scam pitching or other forms of internet uh, crime that we talked about in the south out of 10 hours old i'm not talking about family you know that gives us reason 
the, the, know the, the prevalent, the height of uh, uh, internet crime. And when I sat down, what is the capacity of the uh, economic uh, crime in the EFCC? The EFCC is not, does not even have the capacity to even arrest all this because we are talking about millions of Nigeria. We are not talking about one million. We are not talking about two millions. We are not talking. We are talking about tens of millions. We are not undermining the MBS because they have the official statistics. But we have gone to the streets. So we are telling you that we have millions of Nigerians that are involved in internet crime. So the EFCC does not even have the capacity to climb back down. So the best that they can do, I think I, I want to commend the leadership of uh, Ola, uh, Ola, 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 Ola uh, uh, Ola, who happens to be the current EFC chairman because they have engaged in uh, advocacy to uh, sensitize the youth. Currently, in fact, they are moving at the pace that even anywhere we go, we hear, oh, I think EFCC is doing something similar. I say, yeah, they are doing their best. But, stakeholders must be involved because the SEC alone if this is like you know those days when you're young you when you see some of your uncles that beat you if you do any small thing like that before you know they'll smack you in fact you see some mark of cane you know some of them beat you like yeah you understand so ESC like can be likened to, to such a figure they are scary so you you you, you can't you can't go alone to the few that say uh, Nigerian youth, uh, yeah, we no worry, don't no no no. They will look at you one eye and say, Ah, what you want? What you want? You want to deceive us? No. So that <laughs> partnership with the civil society. In partnership with leading civil society organizations, especially youth group that are working to advance, you know, the you know the cause. So the partnership should be bring them on board. You cannot go alone. In fact, they don't even need to be the figure. The, the, the front line. Let them be behind. Give necessary enabling resources to organizations, civil society, to involve, to interact with this demograph that are in the internet cyber crime space. And that is what the book is talking about. Unnessing their skills, we need to convert them. You know, the Nigerian youth have been using the skills negatively. Why? We have high, high unemployment rates in Nigeria. You know, so the only thing that the young person can find is to go on the internet. How can we survive? So they have moral justification. I put it that they have moral justification because every man has his own right to live. So that is that where survivor comes in, you know. You cannot have a young man that have no access, no work. He does not have any social security perks. He does not have any means of survival. He has tried, you know. You, you go to some state, you see them early morning. They wake up. They are looking for job. There's no job. They you now have have some uh, uh, peers that are now introduce them into come. You what did they do? You you do you like, oh yeah come before you know they introduce them, take them to a, a an apartment. They groom them. They give them skills. They give them food. They give them uh, data. They give them access to things that government has not been able to do now. They have grown them to become what? To become international scammer, international cyber crime. And that is the level that we are. So we have seen these challenges, and we are from the civil society organization, and we now come up with the book, Talent Reboot. We, we suggest our government can in, inculcate, can carry out along the youth in uh, converting their skills. And I, ta I want to thank the current minister for innovation, the, the, what's his name? Uh, mm -hmm. Bosun, Dr. Bosun is doing. You know, if you if you if you look at what he's doing, he's doing. I think I think it's called three MTT something like that. Engaging, I mean, three million Nigerian train the trainer model for them. Yeah, that is a wonderful one. But what we are looking at is to reduce and uh, advance the image, positive image of Nigeria. You know, in the international world, you know, the government from different agencies must come together to organize itself to look into harnessing the potential internet skills potentials of young nigerians between the ages of in fact it's not even the ages of 18 anymore because when you talk about internet because i w i must tell you it has gone below even in secondary school 
In fact, that's where the recruitment starts. I don't want to land it. In primary schools, we have some small, small children in primary school. Because of the, household, household, the households they find themselves in. Yes! You cannot be in a house where you have an internet froster that is doing so well. These are role models. They are grooming. When they go to school, they, show, they, they, they share the skills. So it is a big issue for the nation moving forward. So, but all hope is not lost. Stakeholders are coming together to look into how to, you know, nation building is not the responsibility of government alone. You know. So people have always got it wrong. You leave it in the hands of government. Come on. We are a country of more than 200 million. No exaggeration. 200 million. And the population of uh, the demographic of our youth is is over 60 percent young person vibrant okay let's not exactly let's even put it at 30 percent let's take it down 30 percent of 300 million is talking about how many 200 million. of 200 million is talking about so you can just imagine that we are we are we have a bigger challenge with us and if you leave it in the hands of government alone you only blame the government what are the civil society doing to advance to support the government and we always need to spank the government because they need to open up we are having a program from the civil society organization angle who spent our handing we've even gone uh, i was telling someone yesterday that we have even gone minus you know what that means that means we are on debt and you approach some agencies of government we are helping them we want to some of them look at you as if they, they are doing more than you. No, we are adding value to whatever you are doing. Now, very quickly, in five minutes, because that's uh, as much time would have as we look to wrap up this conversation. Value addition, sustainable growth. What's your hope for this program as we look to wrap up? Well, you see, Nigeria have held one of the highest number of conferences and workshops. And yet, most of them are not translating into results. Because of what? We do not transmit the resolutions to the appropriate quarters. You know, one of the strategies we adopted going into this uh, digital economy transition event scheduled to hold on the 27th August at the High CC Exhibition Pavilion is that we are partnering with the right agencies. We are partnering with the right people. We have one of the partners named wafa foundation wafa foundation is an international organization with uh, domicile in nigeria with the responsibility to transmit whatever you are able to come up with as a recommendation or communicate from any conference to the right quarters and monitor it until it is being executed so we have it as a partner to that project and it was strategic strategic in the sense that we wanted Whatever it is discussed, whatever we come out with from that conference, the president, if the president needs to get a copy, he should get it. If the Senate president needs to get a copy, he should get it. If agencies under Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovations needs to get, they will get it. Not just to get it, but to do a follow-up miniature yeah. event yeah. to see that these things are brought to a logical conclusion so in the event that day we host to have industry experts we want to have tech enthusiasts image maker lawmakers and members of the executive arm of the government and the youths youth and uh, tech enthusiasts between the age of 18 and 35 to come together and shut a way forward into the nigerian digital space which i think is a big deal by the time we start nursing it that is it about the event. Thank you very much. Your call to Nigerian youths uh, ahead of the event for the 27th as we wrap up. Yeah, um, I just want to commend the, the, the efforts of the Nigerian youth, you know, because I know we have the capacity to lead. So whatever we are doing in different sectors, we advance the digital economy. I want you to continue. And uh, on the 27th of August, we, are, we will be in Abuja to come together to share impact and advance uh, the data economy space for Nigeria sustainable growth. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your time on the program this Wednesday. We appreciate you. It is, it is a, a pleasure. Time. And thanks to ADB and TV for hosting us this morning.